Hello, everybody. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. We are in Berlin, Germany, round of 16, the FIBA Eurobasket, and it's Serbia taking on Italy. Here's what's happened so far today. Poland winning over Ukraine. Finland behind Lauren Markkinen's 43 points, winning 94-86 over Croatia. Now it's Serbia, Italy, followed by Greece against Czech Republic. And if this holds true to form here in the round of 16, look out, folks. This is going to be a special game. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mike Taylor. And Mike, if the best league in the world is the NBA and uh, the MVP of that league is the best player in the world, we've got him here in front of us tonight. We've got Nikola Jokic getting ready to suit up for Serbia. This is going to be a special night. It's going to be an enormous challenge for Italy, but I'm sure one that they're looking forward to. Yeah, the knockout stages are something special. Survive in advance, win or go home. Again, Serbia has been one of the more impressive teams in the tournament. Again, they've they've led for all but four minutes of play in in their group. Great players, Nikola Jokic, Vasily Micic. Again, many post-up options. You've got to look at them as a pre-tournament favorite, along with the likes of Greece or Slovenia. But again, we've seen Italy have some big moments and and big wins. Clearly, you got to look at Serbia as a favorite in today's game. But I think we're all still waiting for that first big upset here in the knockout stages in Berlin. Well, we have had great games, two overtime games yesterday with France beating Turkey and then Spain overcoming Lithuania. And today, again, uh, just a terrific basketball. Well, what we've seen, just Lauren Markin and just took our breaths away for Finland. But now it's going to be the Azuri. And don't forget the success that this Italy, Italy team, excuse me, Italia, uh, the, team, the success they had in the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament uh, last year in Belgrade uh, when they won 102 uh, to 95 over Serbia in the final. So a little bit of a different situation with uh, Pozzecco now the coach of Italy instead of Meo Sacchetti, uh, but many of the same players, the majority of them in fact, for Italy going up against Serbia. Big, big game for both of these teams. Without a doubt, and again, we saw two earlier games today, evenly matched teams, winnable game for both teams, and now I think you have a proud Italy team viewed as an underdog, yet very dangerous. And what you like about this team is You've got some veteran players like uh, Nico Melli, Luigi Datome, along with the younger generation players for Italy. I think it's a nice mix, and they can be dangerous out here today on the floor. Serbia coming out, led by the legendary coach Svetislav Pezic, who coached Germany to the 93 FIBA Eurobasket title, then Yugoslavia to the 2001 Eurobasket crown in Istanbul, and then, of course, Yugoslavia to the world title in 2002. He, yes, he is still coaching, and yes, he is still considered to be one of the great minds in basketball. And Jeff, he's very much at home here in Berlin after many successful years with Alba Berlin, later on Bayern Munich in the German League. So he's had a decorated coaching career. He's won as almost everything you can win. And again, he's back here with the Joker trying to help Serbia get back to the top of the European game. Well, the Joker wasn't there last year at the OQT, so uh, he's got a better team, I think, without question, a team that has had more games together, and it looks like a better Serbia team right now than what we saw last summer. So we're going to pause for the national anthems of Italy and Serbia.
Great atmosphere here in the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin, this amazing city in Germany, one of the top cities, not just in Europe, but the world. Put it on your bucket list if you have never been here. It is exceptional. And we'll get a look at the referees for today's game. It'll be Antonio Conde, the crew chief from Spain, Yuna Yomas from Turkey, and Martin Harzov there on the right from Bulgaria, so Conde in the middle and Yonar Yomas from Turkey on the left. Eurobasket Trophy is here, making its appearance. And we'll highlight some of the key players here for Italy. And what about the trajectory of this guy? Simone from Tecchio has been utterly sensational the past few years, and especially for Italy. Again, the next generation type player from Tecchio uh, has asserted himself within this national team. And again, he will have big responsibility in this game out here for the Italian team. How about Nicola Melli as well, one of the veterans in this team? Nicola knows Germany well from his time playing here in the Bundesliga. Of course, former NBA player, now playing for Milano. Inside, outside scorer. Again, one of those veteran guys that's trying to help these next generation Italian players establish themselves. And Gianmarco Pozzecco talking about one of the, shall we say, firebrands or a guy that lights up the camera when he was a player. You just could, you couldn't not watch him the way he played, his performances, his character. Now he's in charge of the national team having taken over from Mayo Sacchetti, who did a fantastic job at the helm. And now Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets for the two-time reigning MVP in the NBA. And we've seen some skilled players so far in this tournament, Doncic among others, Markin in last game. But in terms of skilled big men, I think it's widely known this guy is the most skilled big man in the world, great passer. Great finisher, very intelligent player, great feeling for the game. And Vasily Micic, what a fantastic run he's had overseas. Anadolu Efes, EuroLeague champion. He's, he's done fantastic work, and now he's looking to make a, a great mark here in Eurobasket. So he'll be trying to do his best for Svetislav Pezic. Micic was not at his best for whatever reason last summer, and now with Pezic, uh, again, one of the elite coaches. We should say that Fontecchio will be going to Utah. And, and uh, judging from his performances of late and that of Laurie Markkinen's, uh, Utah will be a team to watch next year. They have got a lot. They have got a lot to be excited about. Especially to see international players making their mark in the NBA. Again, I think all the NBA scouts and personnel that are here have to be really impressed with what they've seen from, for example, Markkinen. Uh, and again, you know, maybe guys are behind some star players in the NBA. There, there's a pecking order within each team. And you see when he's a primary guy what he can do out here. Fantastic performance. And now we're going to see players like Jokic, Micic have their opportunity to put on show here in Berlin. 
For Italy, it'll be Marco Spisu, Stefano Tonut, Niccolo Melli, Simone Fontecchio, and Achille Polinara in the starting five. That last two, if they shoot it as well as they did last year, boy, they could be really dangerous today. Mannion, Beliga, Tessitore, Ricci, Baldasso, Paiola, and Datome coming off the bench. Paiola, one of the premier defenders in Italian basketball and probably Europe. It's a nice roster, and again, what I appreciate about it is the mix of a few veteran players in there that can really take responsibility and, and some of these next generation players. I think it's an exciting time for Italian basketball. Vanya Marinkovic, Nikola Kalinic, Vladimir Lucic, uh, Nikola Jokic, and Vasilian Mitic in the starting five for Serbia with Davidovic, Rustic, Jagodic Koritsa, Guderic, Yermas, and Nikola Milutunov coming off the bench for Serbia. Mike, also, I find it really interesting that Carlo Recicalti, the former Italy coach who led that great Italy team to third place at the FIBA year basket in 2003 in the, in the Olympic gold medal game at the Olympics in 2004, who used to coach Pozzecco, now serving as a mentor. And obviously, he was a great player back in the day. But, you know, connection to the past, bringing it forward. Everybody knows about the greatness of those old Italy teams two decades ago, almost two decades ago, with uh, Basile, with Galanda, with Marconato, all those guys. And Italy, I felt like last year, kind of took that step to get to bring that new era of greatness. Italy took that change with Sacchetti, you know, saying who, goodbye who to him and bringing a, him He Prosecco. had done a very good job with yeah, the team. Yeah. And now they're just trying to get the next generation. But again, Go. we're watching it unfold before our eyes, and that's the beauty. You'll love to see the connection of a former coach and a former player continuing that relationship in the game. It's really nice to see. And we also don't forget the injury to Gallinari, Danilo Gallinari in the buildup. That was a big hit for Italy. Well, we've just turned 6 o'clock here in Berlin, Germany. The round of 16 at the FIBA Eurobasket game between Serbia and Italy is underway. Serbia in the white and attacking the basket to the right. And down low, Kalinic catches it and goes up and scores with the first bucket. It's been really good this summer. Jeff, efficient offensive team, multiple post-op options, and we see a really strong finish on the first possession. Stefano Tonu and Polonara comes out and hits the first three. That's a good sign. Great sign. They attack the drop coverage. Good ball movement and teamwork and an ice drill. And offensive foul called on Serbia. Serbia number 15, Nikola. On Jokic. First team it pushes off Melly, who goes down pretty easily. The winner of this game will take on France. Now the pass over to Spisu in the cor in the corner, back to Melly, and Polinara over to Fontecchio. Steps over, a little bit long. 
Really good ball movement and pace from Italy in the first few possessions. Jokic trying to guard, excuse me, Melli trying to guard Jokic as much as possible. Pazeko and Melli saying, how can we defend Jokic to the referees putting our hands up? But what we see while Jokic will attack in the post and making plays on the offensive side, early on, we've seen Italy pick and pop Melli to get into some perimeter ball movement and stretch out the coverage of Jokic. And they've also set a misdirection action. Instead of setting the screen, they're going into a wide pin. So they're trying to attack Jokic defensively and make him work. Jokic shows his foot skills on the ball, not allowed. You see a lot of good soccer kick plays from the European players. <laughs> it comes as no surprise. They want to take a free kick sometimes, don't they? Yes, they Just do. to remind them it's not allowed. You don't see that in the USA as much. So goes Spisu quickly to Polinar again. Melli with the rebound. Tonut. He will beat you with his three. He will also drive to the basket. Here's Polinara. Quick pass. Fontecchio. And again, the pick and pop action creates the advantage, but the pace of the ball movement is really important here for Italy. Great tempo and pace of ball movement early on. Yep, get rid of it. Here's Mitsic now from deep. Rims out. Melli. Fontecchio reaches over. And now coming over the back is the call on Kalinic. And Pazeko arguing on the sidelines. Probably minimal contact, but anytime you go over the back, you're in danger. Without a doubt. And again, referee's trying to set the line, talk about, hey, coach, that's it. But again, what we see from Italy, the pick and pop situations, Melli can have that shot all the time. They want to get to the next pass and bring more coverage for Jokic, challenge him in that way. There's Marinkovic, known for being a great shooter, although Collins has really been doing the business everywhere. Look at Marinkovic now, a chance to run for the Italians. Fontecchio in the middle of the court, and he gets it to Tonut, and he goes in and lays it up. And again, it's that speed game of Italy. They are trying to play fast in all aspects. Great conversion there, finishing, spacing. Great job from Italy. Tonut. And Mitsic stops and pops, and he's fouled by Tonut. We've seen this before. You've got to direct the ball into the screen. There's the reject, Micic. Pull up with the contact. And Mitsic was right on the money. So Misic completes the three-point play. Now, look at the cut, and Tonut. The opportunity was there. Now Kalinic on four and two break. Over to Marinkovic. Oh, that was good. Now I know why people are saying Serbia might be favorites. Not only a post-up team shooting 42% from three-point range as a team. Just very efficient offensively. Polinara. And Spisu just takes it right away from Lucic. And quickly, the attack. Mitsic reaches in, comes wow. up with a steal. And a technical foul has been called on Pazeko for complaining about that last call, wanting a foul. Jeff, just too demonstrative. He was warned before. 
Again, when officials give you that warning, that's where you need to have that self-control. He's far too emotional in the early going. And you might need the players to go over to settle them down. I'm sure the assistants will try to do that. I mean, this was a clean steal from Mitchich. He knocked the ball away, he saved it. It's one thing to fight for your team, but you've got to do so, again, we've said, with the emotional discipline, the control. Well, this, was, this is Pazeko. This is him. Yes. This is Pazeko, the player. Now Pazeko, the player, is Pazeko, the coach. Consistency. Consistency, but. Be who you are. I don't think he can turn it off. Yeah. Nitsich for three. And there's the follow, and it doesn't go in. Uh, but the ball tapped out, I think, by Kalinic and another opportunity for Serbia. But you know, when he coached in Italy, that was Nitsic as well. So no surprise, Marinkovic, another three-pointer. And Serbia doubled their advantage. Again, Micic into the paint, finds his teammate, and now another steal. The turnover, and Vladimir Lucic goes in. And Serbia up 16 to seven. When you see your opponent lose their composure, you know you have them. Serbia making the run. Marinkovic back through his youth days. Now that he plays for the senior team, he's a shooter. I mean, he's One got of them. great shots here. But again, if you're Italy, you have a great game plan to start the game. You are picking and popping Jokic, making him cover on the perimeter. Melly, big man, can make the next pass and make him cover again on the second side. The pace of the ball movement was fantastic, but now you lose your composure, and again, you're playing from behind. Well, we saw something similar, I guess, with Turkey. See if uh, they can turn it around. Polinari gets it down low and scores. So again, they're using Nicolo Melli in a pop, and he is the playmaker. He's making great decisions with the ball. You've got to stick with it. Jokic out to Kalinic, and he's fouled, shooting the three, and fouled by Fontecchio. Pedrag Danilovic, one of the greats of Serbian basketball, and now the Federation president. So you can see the Italian defense react to the post-touch. They flood the paint. Jokic, such a brilliant passer. Beautiful pass with touch for the three-point shot. Well, Kalinic is just uh, having the summer of a lifetime, really. I mean, he has been terrific. Tony to Nicola Melli. Goes in for the two-handed jam. Again, attacking Jokic in pick and roll coverage to pick and pop this time towards the basket. Easy two. Hits it for three. Look at Jokic get the rebound and put back. Jeff, such good hands. Melli goes in, what a finish for Nicola Melli, showing a lot of leadership right now for Italy. Ooh, that didn't look right. And 
And Toner called for a foul on Jokic. So again, the pick and pop situation we've seen. Melly be a distributor. This time he attacks the closeout and finishes very well. And that was him. Again, every offensive possession has been some type of pick and pop attacking Jokic, whether it's to get distribution to the second side for opportunities, or that time dive to the rim, attacking the closeout. Melly, Italy offense going through him in this first quarter. Pontecchio and Polinara have to take a break. Jokic at the line with Ricci and Paiola checking into the game. Love this player, Paiola. Here he goes. And he drives in. He might have had a shot if he'd gone for it. Melly. And look at Paiola sneak in, get the rebound. Tonut over to Datomi, the captain. Luigi Datomi back over to Melly. If you're watching stateside, you might remember Datomi from his Detroit Pistons days and Boston Celtics days. Well, back in Europe for several years. Here is Jokic. Kalinic. And good hands, Paiola. He's really bringing it for the Italians off the bench. Mitsic over to Lucic. And Lucic's attempt not there, but there's Jokic once again with the, the rebound and the failed put back. They're going to have to figure out how to box Jokic out. Melly again. This time the three-pointer falls. Mannion's going to come into the game as well. On the next dead ball for Italy. The Chief called for the foul. This was the pass from Paiola back to Melli. And you can just see as Nikola Jokic helped on the drive, he got stretched out, and he's just unable to recover. This is the advantage Italy wants to create, whether it's for the shot, attacking the closeout, or to get to the next play with a consecutive pass in what we call an ice drill situation. Mannion replaces Tonut. So Serbia just pouring in the points, 25 already, and we still got 216 remaining in this opening quarter. Jokic is out. Davidovic or Milutinov comes in. Yermas in the game as well. Yermas number 25 guarding Paiola. Patomi, oh. Are they going to, oh, they're not going to give him the three free throws. I'm not sure he was shooting. But Italy are claiming that he was. Remember, if he gets another technical, Pazeka will be out. I mean, it's hard to argue he's shooting there. He didn't really have a shooting form. He shot faked and then yeah. went into the contact. Yeah. What's interesting is the Italian nature to speak with your hands and be yeah. demonstrative. Which is, a, you have to be even more careful doing right. that. Right, officials cannot take that as, you know, you're out of control. Although, I'm not sure gestures will be welcomed. Right. Is that how you guys gesture in the Taylor household? 
with uh, your sons and your wife? We don't. We're not as demonstrative. It's just, I guess, by nature. Just smile. Yeah. Whatever. Talk about the day. Talk about the fantastic Eurobasket games and matchups. Sporting events of the day. Hey, Davidovitz is coming to the game. He's guarding to Tommy. Beliga also in the game. Hands it off to Mannion. Paola gets it to Richie. Quickly to Datome. Good rebound, Richie, but then he tries to go up and Datome steals the basketball, puts it up. Big play from the captain. Again, you can see the awareness of Datome. Really, multiple efforts there. Great block by Lucic. Clear foul on Payola. Guterich. Oh, no, they call the travel on Guterich. Guterich spent some time in the NBA as well, didn't he? Memphis? I mean, this is a very deep team. What's interesting is we saw Italy's game plan to attack Jokic with a pick and pop. Now with Jokic off the floor, where are they going for offense? How are they trying to create their advantages? A zipper cut, middle pick and roll. Now Paola really being harassed by Yermas, who, and now a hold on Davidovic. Mike, I was talking to some Serbian journalists that I know in the mix zone after the Finland game, and they were far from confident about this game, primarily because all of the games had been very tight. This Italy team, even though they've fallen behind by double digits, they're looking pretty competitive right now. Here's Mannion getting in for the layup. I mean, fantastic job by Nico Mannion using his diving big as traffic and finding the gap to the rim. Beautiful finish. Look at him here. Well, he was so good last year in Belgrade. And now that he's seen those, so, those same jerseys again, he is taking it to the hoop. Timeout called by Pezic and Serbia. There's hope for Pozeko in Italy. That was an impressive drive for Melly, if only because he took it right at Jokic. And Melly has big responsibility in this Italy game plan. They will play through him in those pick and pop situations. He's an experienced player, good decision maker. But you gotta love the way Italy has not bounced back and not backed down. They've cut into this deficit, looking to finish the quarter strong. Ooh, Davidovic's open floor. Not sure that's what Serbia want. He gives it up to Milutunov. Yadamas drives, gets blocked by Beliga. And he's beleaguered now. Here comes Datome. Italy making a run with their guys off the bench. Here he goes, Poyola. And Milutunov with the rebound. Both these teams essentially playing for the Eurobasket lives right now. This is when it gets hot and heavy, the knockout round. And Guterich. Well, leaves his feet and he kind of had his he's back to the basket. That's what, uh, uh, look at that, Dirk Nowitzki's watching. Whenever he's here, we always, the camera finds him. 
just like the ball used to find him. And look how friendly gives the fans a wave, wave the fans cheer. Is Again, he wearing Serbian blue or Italian blue? A well chosen color as it's neutral. Neutral for both teams today. Yes. It's uh, indecisive. Again, when you've watched this Italian team for several years, Paul Beliga has been a key front court player as an undersized mobile big. He's very good in pick and roll. Coach Collet and staff watching. Pascal Donadieu on the left. Collet has been a little bit testy lately. Still alive in the tournament, though, Jeff. That's the most <laughs> important thing. It's been a crazy tournament for the French, maybe more so than any other team. We really don't know what to make of France. Here comes Mannion. He's got to put it up quickly. So Serbia, they led by 11. And uh, Italy cut it back to six. And now it's Serbia on top, 28 to 20 after one. Looking at the numbers, pretty even in field goal percentage. Again, still early shooting threes, but one number that jumps out. Serbia 11 for 11 from the free throw line, while Italy still looking for their first trip to the charity stripe. Don't tell Pazeko that. <laughs> He's already hot. Oh, you see Tonu got away with a slap on the face. And then ended up committing the foul. Here is uh, Vanya Marinkovic. You know, basketball's a game of runs, isn't it? It is a game of runs. You just tend to have more runs when Nikola Jokic is in your team. Yeah, he's he's a great player. But again, you like the way Melly has started the game for Italy. Again, Jokic, you see that highlights all the time with the Denver Nuggets. Mannion making an impact. And again, the coaches imploring their team. Lucic can be a key to a player for Serbia. Scanning the barcode to get courtside 1891 in your smartphone. So you'll get stream schedules, scores from this competition and other national team competitions. Mercedes Benz Arena is home to Phoebe Urbasket 2022. We're in the round of 16. Second quarter is underway between Italy and Serbia. Serbia leading at 28 to 20. Tome. Not the result you expect when Tome eyes up the bucket. Jokic back in the game, held by Beliga. Italy number six, Paul Beliga. Second person, it's my just foul. First, team foul. Pezic. Chewing on that gum over there. I don't know. I'm sure he has to be happy with where he is right now. Guterich putting it on the deck. Has it stripped by Payola. And now, an un and now a foul called on Guterich. And Mike, for all of these uh, scouts here watching games, I'm sure Payola must be attracting some attention with his ability to guard. Yeah, I mean, that's outstanding defense. You talk about he fought off being rejected and then recovered to make a big defensive play. His Wait. length, his mobility. And he's got some offense. He's got the ball right now. There he is, getting away while trying to escape Yadermas. That's a great, great call by Pezic to put Yadermas on him. He wants some on him like white on rice. Oh, Mannion has the ball knocked away by Jokic. And 
Jeff Serbia did an outstanding job directing the ball in that pick and roll rather than letting Mannion figure out where he wants to go. You could see he was directed to the left to his weak hand. Jokic with the great hands gets the deflection and steal. <laughs> Pezic signaling a sportsmanlike foul. But referees did not even look at it. Beautiful. David Ovis to Jokic. Again, they ran an initial action to post him up on the, the left block. They reversed it through the top of the key, cross screen. Jokic catch finish. Beautiful action there from Coach Pesic in Serbia. Paola. Oh, and now he turns it over almost. And the Italy guard suddenly a little sloppy. The Tommy open for three. Got it. And that's more like the expectations on that ball swung to the Tommy for a catch and shoot shot. Nice shot by the veteran. Same play here. Yadermas, and it is Tatome. Here you go, Nico Mannion. It turns out, actually, Payola was on the Dallas Mavericks summer league team. And Tatome drives in and is fouled. And apparently, he was well received, so maybe Dirk Nowitzki's here also watching. Payola. Nice little rally here for Italy. They're a little fortunate to get something out of this mess. But, Jeff, we've got another technical on the Italian bench this wow. time from the row of assistant coaches. Wow, this is a circus over on that bench. What is going on? The teams trying to make a comeback. You're playing against the best player in the world and you're getting technicals called. That's not helping yourself win. You know, and the, really, I can't see Carlo Recicalti getting the technical. Yeah, Datome makes a great play in transition, draws the foul, and you basically give Serbia a point. What's that uh, saying? Take a chill pill. Huh. Please. We want to have a good game here. So here's Datome. You know the Italians are pretty emotional on this in sports. That's good. You, but you've got to channel that emotion properly into the game. Right. Seven points, the difference. Look at Piola chasing Mitzis. There's Jokic getting in and scoring in traffic. Jeff, the touch in traffic on a short roll. Beautiful finish from Jokic. And you see that, and you just think, wow, what a celebration of basketball this is. Jokic is just spectacular. Here's Richie putting up the three. Melly's coming back in. Good sub. Ooh. Nice pass to Guterich. Oh, he almost banked that in. And Guterich Kuritsa with the rebound. Mm. Guterich and Jokic again offensive rebound and put back there's nobody like him the put back he's got 16 points four rebounds a couple of questionable shots taken And Dottomi's going to try to push Richie away for the, from the Turkish referee. Question is, did Jokic come down on someone's foot and roll his ankle here? Take a look. He definitely came down a little awkward. He's going to stay on the court. Good to see him up, walking around, walking it off. Yeah, nobody wants to see him uh, roll his ankle. No. Fontecchio back in the game. So Italy starters back on the floor. 
as are Serbia's with the exception of uh, Jogodic, Kurica, and Guterich. Here's Kalinic. Finds his teammate open the right corner. He can bury it, which he does. 14-point lead. Again, Kalinic that time, post-up option, makes a great pass. Melly looks good. It is. And Paiola reaches around, knocks the ball out of Mitsic's hands, goes off his leg, but he's fouled. They call the foul. So Paiola's going to come out. Spisu comes back in. See Nick Lomelli uh, kind of shaking his head as if to say, what can we do about Jokic? They, have, just... they have to keep attacking him because they can create advantages for their offense. They've got to stay with it, but it's not just Jokic in the post-up opportunity. Ooh. Missed that one badly. Melly again, and another three-pointer for Nicola Melly on the telly. Again, that is a tough recovery for Jokic. They have a choice to change their pick and roll coverage or rotate from the backside. 13 points for Melly. Now Jokic gets blocked and then he gets it back. And he stays with it and he gets it and he's just got quick hands, doesn't he? The length, the soft hands, the intelligence, feeling for the game. 18 points for Jokic. Again, we see a switch now. Throw it back, attack him. And Kalinic almost forced a turnover. Spisu puts it up for three. It's long, but a long rebound to Tonut. Fontecchio to Polinara, and he is fouled from behind. It's really a case right now. It feels like of Italy just trying to stay in the game. And it's almost impossible when this happens. You know, coaches come up with a lot of plays to create an advantage offensively, but there's no better advantage than a post-up advantage. And we see... Serbia can do it at several spots. Meli, oh boy. It looked good, but it, it was off. Here comes Kalinic. Meli trying to guard from behind. Jokic back to the basket. Serbia passes it around. And Oh, they've called a flop on Polinara. Well, we've seen the Italian defense. They're trying to bump the cutter, bump the diver. And he just embellished it and put too much of a show into it here. You can see. You expect out of a defensive coverage. Hey, bumped the diver. They kicked out and switched. So another technical free throw and another point for Serbia. Well, at least Jokic for Italy has gone out of the game. Now you got to make your move. I think that much is obvious. Yeah, they need to finish this first half strong, get themselves back into the into the game. Only down 12 points, but that's a lot against a good team like Serbia. Mitic. Middle two off. Now Fontecchio. Need to get him going. 
Nice. Here he goes. And they're going to call the foul. And that's more like it for the Azuri. Again, really good pace in transition. Great teamwork deal. Give and go. Boom. Great basket cut. Beautiful passing. They just play basketball. They're pretty good, Italy, aren't they? Great play right there. There's Fantecchio. And again, gets it back to single digits. There's Jokic. Catching a breather. Shown up in good shape this summer and has been a great player. But there have been a lot of great players at this Eurobasket. Doncic. We just watched Lauren Markin and be have a spectacular day. And Tete Compo, obviously. Giannis and Tete Compo. And Melly almost coming up with a steal. Look at him harass Kalinic. Kalinic gets in the paint, makes the pass. And Serbia lucky to come up with that, but they got to put it up at the last second. And Melly with a great rebound. Italy not happy that the fast break was stopped there. Because of the shot clock. Yeah, shot clock violation. But again, they got their job done. They've got another stop. Are France pulling for Italy here, you think? Oof. I think France is really happy they're alive. and They are. They're probably still shaking after what happened against preparing Turkey. preparing themselves for whoever they play. Fontecchio. There goes Melli. Nice. Fontecchio right on target. The Italians have closed the gap to six. Playing with passion, determination, resoluteness. They are not giving up the ghosts. Again, I love the pace of their ball movement. Quick ball movement, quick teamwork. Leads to the open shot. Great job, Team Italy. Timeout, Serbia. Mike, the give and go with Fontecchio, that great old player that never goes away in basketball. Yeah, all, all the veterans love that play. Again, no dribbles, great passing and cutting. And again, what you have to remember is in the round of 16, France, for example, led by 16 points against Turkey. Turkey came all the way back and had a chance to win it at the end of regulation, missed two free throws, and then threw the ball away, and France went down and scored to force overtime and won it. Montenegro were down 24 at halftime against Germany, came back and made a game right at the end. And then, of course, the other game that went to overtime was Lithuania and Spain. So Serbia have been the better team, but this thing isn't over. Look at this. Italy have come up with another steal. Ooh. Montecchio goes down. Tonut. And now the foul has been called. Montecchio is talking to the referee about the collision. But you know, Jeff, Kalinic was talking to the referee too, saying, hey, call a flop, call a flop. And as he's talking to the referee, he's the low exactly. man. He needs to be the low man and help position. And there's the drive from Tonu drawing the foul. Again, you know, you've got to be focused and present in the action on the floor. You cannot be distracted. All of these possessions, as you just illustrated, teams have come back. Every possession is critical. Every possession is count. You've got to be ready for the present play and the next play. And Kalinic is one of Serbia's most important players, and he just picked up his third foul. And meanwhile, Italy rarely get to the free throw line, and Tonu makes one of two. So... <laughs> Five-point game. It's all good here in Berlin. 
Just a little testy in the first half. Lots of texts, lots of gripes. Here's Mitsic missing, and now Mele with the rebound, and the Serbia fans that have been busy chanting MVP, MVP for Jokic and for Mitsic are now a little nervous. Again, again, great response from Italy. They're making their run. See the switch with the Melly pick and roll. Nice scram defense, kicking out the guard, fixing the matchup size on size. Oh, Melly just doing too much there. Guarded by the Goddard Koritsa. Really good ball pressure defensively. Serbia needs a good offensive possession. Mitsic drives in. Oh, oh my goodness. You are kidding wow. me. That, you are kidding me. Scooping it up with the left hand from under the backboard. Oh, my gosh. Tonu. Spisu for three. He's got to hit that after that job. And Italy with a three-point shot coming back. It's a four-point game. Italy from three-point range. Seven of 17, that's three more threes than Serbia has hit. Serbia have earned a living at the free throw line with their 14 of 15. Here's Spisu. Again, Tonu created the advantage, rejecting the screen, getting in the paint, and really good teamwork, letting the ball find the open shooter. I want to see Micic's finish. That's what I want to see under the rim. Well, you, you can't question how excited Pazeku is, that's for sure. And with that foul, Mitsic goes to the line and makes the first. Spisu called for the foul. So, again, the free throw line has been very good for Serbia. They're 15 of 16. That's a very red hot 94%. And again, a lot of time coaches will look at free throws. Are we focused? Are we locked in? Not leaving anything at the line. One fifteen remaining in the first half. Fontecchio, count it. The Italian. I mean, that's a fired up. Great shot. It's a three-point game, Mike. Oh. What a shot. He can just flat out fill it up. Cool. And then some. Well defended, stepped into it with confidence. The pass back to Militunov, the two handed rim rocker. Outstanding pick and roll play. Michis dropped it off to the diver, and that's how you finish a roll. Pontecchio says, you want some of this? And he's fouled by Militunov. So free throws coming for Fontecchio, one of the sensations of European basketball. Look at that over-the-shoulder pass. And Militunov knew exactly what to do with it. Do you think Italy makes this run if Jokic is on the court? What Jokic gives Serbia is clear identity on the offensive end and automatic advantage. When that ball goes in the post, Italy has to react, and we've seen him finish. We've seen him get post-reaction shots for teammates. So the challenge with him on the bench is what do they do on the offensive end? We've seen pick and roll with Micic. Paola comes back in for the final 30 seconds. And Fontecchio takes a seat. Great minutes from him. He's got 13 points. Boy, he put those points up in a hurry, didn't he? He's got two fouls as well, along with Beliga, Tonut. So not wanting them to pick up their third. Kalinic on the bench with three fouls for Serbia. Mitsic, we just saw him score that incredible layup. He was under the backboard, and he put it up with his left hand. Here he goes. Steps back. 
puts it up. Oh, man. That guy's not human. And now, uh -oh. look at that. Marika. Oh. They wanted a timeout. Italy so called a timeout. Almost a steal for Serbia. But you could see Mitic wanted the shot. He milked the shot clock, used the screen twice, penetrate on Melly after the switch, and then look at the back. step back. And the Carolina Blue Shoes. And you nails it. Like those. Tar Heel fans. <laughs> you know he is. Look at that. Drilling it. That's a big shot here for Serbia at the end of the first half. Plenty of time to get it up the court. And notice where they have Melly positioned in the corner. Let's see if they try to get some type of advantage run out here. So Fonteco comes back in the game. So Polinara, Melly, Fonteco, three point shooters, as well as Spisu and Mannion. Oh, he's got Melly wide open in the corner. There he goes. Takes his time. Ooh. He'll be mad that he missed that. It couldn't have been any. I mean, Jeff, more he, open. he ran corner to corner and got wide open. That's amazing. Militunov was like, what? Where'd he go? He's looking in He's the left there. and he was on the right. Serbia on top 51 45 against Italy at halftime. Mike, part of me thinks Serbia must be thinking we played well, we're up by six. And how is it that we have to play a team this good? in our round of 16 game. Again, as we look at the shooting numbers here, obviously, even with field goal percentage, three-point shots, eight for 19 for Italy. Rebounds are key, Jeff. 20 rebounds to 11 for Italy, but nine offensive rebounds leading to 11 second-chance points for Serbia. Again, you see Jokic, obviously a difference maker here. Melli, they played in the first quarter early offense through him. Fontecchio with great shooting. I mean, we are setting ourselves up for a great second half, and Italy has to like where they are after falling behind early. They really do, and we'll see if they can kind of maintain this level of play as they come back out. But, it, you know, as good as uh, Jokic has been, Mitsic has been making plays. Four well, assists to go with his 11 points, and his, his scoring has been dynamic. Uh, yeah, their combination is what makes this team good. Jokic, ability to create advantages all the time. You know, Mitch, it's as a playmaker and leader, uh, playing pick and roll. But again, they have multiple post-up options, and they are a smart passing team that shoots the ball well from three. This is Serbia's advantage. But again, you have to love the way Italy has played together. 13 assists to only five turnovers. They've had great pace in their ball movement. You know, we've had really good teamwork from Italy. You know, the big question is they've got to get defensive stops, control the defensive boards, and then continue to attack. You think Italy's got a chance in this? 100%. What about European basketball? This Eurobasket in Cologne, Woo. because that's where we were. And now here in Berlin, Jeff, we've seen great players, great teams, great coaches, great performances. It's been really oh, just you don't uh, want it to end, do you? fun to watch. I mean, we do four games a day. Let's do six games a day if they're like this, right? That <laughs> no, gets... Mike, please. <laughs> Take a step back. Yeah. Actually... Yeah, you don't realize that the games just kind of fly by. But, you know, USA's not here. Obviously, 
Um, Team like Australia. Australia's not here, yeah. but from top to bottom, this competition. Okay, Hungary, we're a little bit overmatched in our group. And I'm sure there are a few other weak links. But overall, the competition has been fantastic. And, you know, the best thing is you have, you know, cores of national teams and countries that have, you know, gone through lots of experiences. And we look at Poland today winning. You know, you see the core and how these guys have gone through different situations, success, failure, been on the big stage and achieved. But we also have NBA stars in action. Serbia lead 51-45 over Italy at halftime. There's no ball pressure applied to Schroeder. Bukavishis puts it up. Count it. What a play from Bukavishis, who just has become a very important player in this team. And it's not just defense. A little bit of hope here for Montenegro. If they can drill it. Oh, they're going to get it to Dublovic. And he goes old school, just lays it up. Again, Mihailovic in attack mode. Beautiful play in pick and roll. He's really shown well here today. The is now trying to guard Brown. And they get it to Garuba! Usman Garuba dunks Spain into a six-point advantage. Maybe the lob. Ooh, oh, look at this. Tenchar! Luka Doncic gets his first assist of the game. Bucket for Tunchar. No extra space, a great talent. Oh, this. And this time, Carpe is not going to be denied. He goes in for the dunk. Austin wins for the block. They're letting the time run down. They get it to Jokovitis. Oh, and they get it tipped Can you believe it? Can you believe it? We've got overtime. What more could you ask for? Knockout stage basketball. Doncic just scored for belts for, for Slovenia. Here he is getting fouled and he scores. Three point play opportunity. And this time just an extraordinary finish from Luka. So, such touch, such skill to be hit in, in an awkward position. goes in for the dunk. How about that? Dennis the menace. Beautiful handoff. Clear runway to the basket. First round of 16 game comes down to this. Fournier with a little runner and short, but there's no bad by the putt back. Can you believe it? Big bad Rudy Gobert goes up for the put back dunk. And Rudy Gobert and boy Turkey are lucky they did not also put the whistle on that play. Watch Osmani go up and go for the block. And that's what Rudy Gobert was saying. Rudy Gobert playing above the rim.
Plenty of smiles on the faces of these fans here tonight. Well, Pazeko does smile some when his team scores, but he is intense. A picture of intensity tonight, which is boiled, boiled over a couple of times. And Mike, it's a six point game right now. And Serbia made what, three technical free throws? Two technicals and then one for a flop. So it could be a different story, but Italy right in it. And one reason why is because of their leading score tonight. This guy right here, boy, he has really just stepped up, hasn't he? He's a tough matchup for Jokic. Again, those pick and pop situations, you can create the advantage. We've seen him distribute to the second side of the play. We've seen him attack closeouts. We've seen him hit threes. We've seen him pick and pop and get downhill. Again, Melly playing through him has been a really good playmaker uh, attacking Jokic. And it's great to see him stepping up and being so productive for Italy offensively. Well, Nikola Jokic is always going to be a problem. Again, Jokic, the six offensive boards, the great hands, the ability to finish, commanding, you know, defense in the low post, creating the advantages. Uh, the, the touch in the lane in traffic is just so impressive. Look at him just stay with it. So as we look inside the, Ber the Mercedes Benz Arena in Berlin, and I almost wonder if Serbia are, are, are thinking to themselves, this isn't the same Italy that played in the group phase. Well, I'm sure they're not worried about, you know, things of the past, games of the past. I'm sure they're just focused about this challenge and understanding like, hey, we've got to take care of business out here today. They've put themselves in a good position in halftime, but again, we've seen it. It could be a 24 point deficit for Montenegro against Germany. It could be a slow start for Turkey against France. Teams will not quit in Eurobasket. They will not go away. You've got to beat them. So there's still work to be done okay, for well, Serbia. Well, I'm going to say it. This is not the same Italy. And I'm curious, why is it not the same Italy? Well, you know, again, let's say the development of the young players we've got, let's say, uh, you know, Polinara, Fontecchio, you've got Nico Mannion, the next generation type players on the same roster with a Datome, uh, with a Meli, with a Tonut. You know, Beliga has been a really important, valuable piece as an undersized big for, for Italy for many years. So you've got a nice mix on the roster, and we see Fontecchio stepping up and just burying shots with confidence. I mean, that's a great thing for Italy. I just, I think probably Melly has also, you know, the veterans have kind of said, hey, listen, guys, we got we to step up. You know, we made it we made it through the group phase in fourth place, which you know they're disappointed finishing fourth behind Ukraine and Croatia. Uh, this Italy team should not have finished behind Ukraine and Croatia. They probably have higher as well expectations as and have a different self-perception than that. But we've seen Ukraine go down. We've seen Croatia go down. Uh, so again, the challenge now for Italy is, as we see, Simone Fontecchio, you know, again, the great shooting day, rising to the challenge here for his team. But yeah, their self-perception is definitely not a fourth place finish in that group. Now they have new life and they want to try to capitalize on it. They were on the ropes early, had some emotional situations early, but now they're in a position where it's a very competitive game and, and everything's on the table. And let's also don't forget that Italy only lost 85-81 to Greece, so they clearly get up for the big games. They really took it to, you know, took it against uh, Atetokounmpo and, you know, facing Jokic and this Serbia team. Maybe it's just bringing out the best in terms of performance level. They, they, I'm sure they are, out of respect and, and hey, what, what's at stake. But just like Jokic commands and creates the advantage on offense, Italy has a good game plan to attack him defensively, and they can always create advantages with the pick and pops with Melly. We've seen them play through Melly in a very good way. We've seen 
outstanding pace in their ball movement, create good opportunities, really good teamwork. So, you know, it's a good game plan from Italy, and we have to see which side's going to win. Will it, will Serbia be able to establish the post and play through a dominant Jokic, or, you know, will Italy be able to keep up the attack, the teamwork, creating advantages, and, and make the big plays together? Well, Italy started, had such a poor start to the game, and, uh, you know, they, they were playing really well. Halftime came. Let's see if it takes them time to, to get it going again. There you see number 22. He's got 11 points, three of seven from the floor. And when he has scored his points, he has been superb. Step back threes, behind the back dribbles. Behind the backboard <laughs> finishes. Now, again, you know, a lot of people will focus on Jokic, but Micic is a key to this team. There's several other really quality players on the Serbia team, and, and again, you have to consider them one of the one of the favorites. Scanning the barcode to get the FIBA Eurobasket app in your smartphone. I'm looking at it every two minutes because I go over, look for little tidbits. Italy played who? What was that score? How many points did he have? If you had the app like many fans do, you would recognize that Serbia was the only team to have a point differential of over 100 points in the group phase with 105. Impressive. Second half action underway here in Berlin, Germany. The second day of round of 16 action, and they come oh. right out. Serbia try to lob to Lucic. Kalinic, who has the three fouls, passed to Lucic, and it didn't come off. Well-designed play, well fought out. The backdoor lob just need to execute. Italy ball. And Tonut takes the shot and chase down. Great save to Melli. Chased down by Fontecchio. Pass goes out of bounds. Melly thought he was cutting the other way. Melly makes great decisions. Ordinarily, that was a low percentage choice right there. Ball back to Serbia. Jokic over to Lucic. And the ball knocked away. Good job. Spisu pulls up on the break. Italy keeps it alive. Lucic comes down with the basketball. Jokic goes to work, passes over to Kalinic. He drills the three. If you keep cutting, your Jokic will find you. Well, batted out of bounds. Meets it with the size advantage. Here you see Jokic, great cut, took the defense. Kalinic buries the three. And the pass to Polinar for the dunk. 
Well, that pass was on target. Beautiful pass from Melly. Nice cut from Polinara. Again, the teamwork. Easy basket for Italy. Itzic spins outside. Jokic for three. Oh, wow. Houston, we have a problem. Unbelievable. In the first half, they set the back screen to post him up. Here he bumps the cut to three-point line, unguarded three. What an offensive weapon. Is this where Serbia going to really take over? Spisu misses in the follow from Meli. Hoping to come up with a steal. Mitsic. Gets it to Jokic. Shot clock about to expire. Oh. And no need to reach. Jeff. Not going to count it. He banked it in off the shot clock above the backboard. Was that intentional? <laughs> Apparently here, just as a fun shot after the whistle. This is what he did. No, that was the three that he made. Here's Marinkovic, shot clock about to expire. Did he get it off in time? So Serbia posting up Jokic at the top of the key, trying to play through dribble handoffs. Spisu sprints in, gets it up and in, and they score. I think uh, the Italian bench are asking for them to review the last shot to see if he got it off in time. This is a good answer, though, from Spisu. So again, the Serbia defense. Watch Marinkovic see. Yep. Beautiful finish. But did it did he get it? Did it was it out of his hands before the backboard letting went on? That's a great question. They would have to slow it up a little bit. So a big play by Spisu, but they gotta get stops at this end. Melly reaches in, knocks it out of Jokic's hands, but commits the foul. Again, he's had so many post-ups in his career. He has such a great feeling for drawing fouls and making plays. Good play, Polinar reaching in to come up with a steal. Melly looking for the outlet pass to get it up to Fontecchio. He doesn't mess around. I mean, that's a beautiful transition. Ball never touched the floor. Great ball ahead. Catch and shoot. Outstanding fast break for Italy. My word, Fontecchio can shoot it. Look at this. Mitzitz at the other end. Trading baskets. Back to the six-point difference that we had at halftime. Tonut's been very quiet offensively now. He gets in on the act. That was a two. He's got five points in the game. Mitsic. Kalinic. And missed everything. I mean, it's a great play. You've got some ball reversal weave action, and then a Spain pick and roll wide open. Just missed it. Tonu doing what he does, hitting shots. Look at Pazeko, still wants to get out there. That's Rekha Kalti behind him, his former national team coach. So Marinkovic takes a seat. Guterich in the game. You think that's a change for defense? They find Melly. And the hands by Melly, excellent play. And up to Tonut. Decides to shoot it. And Italy, look at him crashing the boards. They'll be disappointed they didn't get anything on that trip.
Hits it back to Jokic. Oh. She shares the basketball, and Lucic gets blocked out of bounds by Polonara. Good reaction by Achille Polonara. Beautiful quick passing in the paint, setting up Lucic. And no, that was Melly that blocked it Melly, out. Excuse me. Fantastic reaction to block the shot. Remember, Italy hosted a group in Milan. And a late call. They got to be careful. Oh, they've teed him up again. One of the players for standing up was a Datome. Another technical foul. So a technical foul on the bench, and I assume it's one of the players, and I thought it was the captain, Datome, who stood up. And I guess that's unity. They're all in this together. It's quite powerful, isn't it? Also, was it on was it on Pazeko? He's no, been. No, it's a second on the bench, so now the so, coach. So he has to leave. Yes. Okay, sorry. So that is a huge call. Pazeko is out. And he's crying. And he's going to go shake the hands of everybody from Serbia. It's, uh, there's no doubt about his passion, desire to win, his intensity. And the big question is, does he have to rein it in just a little bit? But, but again, Jeff, if it's on the bench. Right, but Jeff, his team needs him. And as the coach, you are in, you're responsible for the bench. So, oh, man, look at that. He is absolutely bursting into tears now. Again. That is a tough, tough walk for Pazeko. It cannot get to that point. You've got to adjust to the situation much earlier. The referees gave him a warning early in the game. He kept pushing. He got his technical foul. And then the bench technical. And then the bench. But again, the coach is the leader of the team. If he is out of control emotionally, it's not a surprise when the rest of the group have some people or personalities that are out of control. So you as the coach must demonstrate leadership and emotional control no matter the pressure situation. You do, and this means his assistant is going to take over. Obviously, the players are going to be playing now with even more fire. Is this going to help them in that sense? Here's Melly, or is it a distraction they could do without? Here is Paola. Wow, it's really just kind of leaves you speechless in a way, doesn't it? Pazeko's in there crying his eyes out. This is why he wants to be here. This he is thinks why he's you, let his team down. Right. This is why you play the games. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Lucic from the left corner. Now Fontecchio. Quick pass. Spisu. Good. The three-pointer. You never know. In a bizarre way, it could actually help Italy. Polinara with a beautiful pass, finding his teammate in the opposite corner. Again, opposite corner fill for spacing on a post up. Raya Lucic from the right corner, and Italy have it. And now the turnover back to Jokic, to Guterich. Well, that was a chance they had to go down and nod it. And now Jokic makes the pass to Kalinic. And he misses. And Paola battling and bats it over to Spisu in the midcourt. Crazy things happening in Berlin. Spisu for three. Got it. Italy have tied it. 
And you have to say, if there's some neutrals in this crowd, many of them have probably come to see Jokic, but it's hard not to get behind Italy right now. Again, the emotional run here, back-to-back -back big threes, tying the game. You can see how much it means to the Italian players. Now we have even ground, three minutes to go, third quarter. So a lot of responsibility has now fallen to Eduardo Casalone, the assistant coach. Obviously, Carlo Recchi-Calfi will be chiming in as well, and the other coaches. But Eduardo Casalone has got to uh, pick up the baton for Gianmarco Pizzecco, who had to leave because of the bench technical. And you just could not write a more dramatic script here tonight for this game. Unless this game goes right to the wire, then it gets even more dramatic, and that's what I'm expecting. Missage for three, short, and it seems to some of the air has been taken out of the out of the out of the balloon for for Serbia. They've, the wind isn't in their sails right now, like it was earlier in the game. It's almost like the development of Pozeka has kind of affected them. Here's Spisu again. Good! Italy! Can you believe it? I've taken the lead. Meets it, gambled right after Spitsu hit back to back threes. And rest assured, there are no MVP chance right now for Serbia. Mitsic comes in. Crazy. They battle for the rebound. Jokic scraps away. And the call goes against Italy. Italy number 17, Giacomo Vitti, the personal director's follow for Team Paul Italy. Look at Spisu. I think it wide open. Mitic gambled, tried to get the steal as they swung the ball, and then it's an easy consecutive pass. And he's hot. He just hit big threes. What about Casaloni, about how he handles this situation? Oh, he's going to do his very best, and the tough thing will be in crunch time, timeouts, and situations, it's got to be a staff effort. Jokic for three. Not this time. Fonteku can't rebound it. Goodrich knocks it away. Goodrich being guarded by Spisu. Goodrich has to pass it. Chigodnik Kuritsa for three. Nice response. When the ball goes in the post, you can see Italy almost in a 2-3 zone to pack the paint. They've just got to space the floor and make a good decision out. Paiola. Boo's raining down now on Italy. And Yedermas fouls Melli. Smart foul in the disadvantage situation in that post with fouls to give. You see, into the post, great pass out and big three to tie the game. Tatome comes in from Melli and Serbia fans, young and old, sitting courtside. Quick pass. Spisu thought about it. Here's Tatome over to. Paolo Ricci back to Paiola. And Ricci challenging Jokic, but Jokic comes down with the basketball. I think with Yermaz, you almost want to sag a little bit, don't you? He's not going to hurt you from out there. He's going to hurt you with his drive. 
And reaching over from behind, the foul on Richie. That is team foul number five. So Jokic will go to the line. Jokic really working hard for a position. Nick Kalathis in the middle. And other Greek players, Lanzakis, watching. They play the last game against the Czech Republic. We're all looking forward to seeing that matchup as well. Jokic working really hard to get position and the Serbian team working hard to get him the ball. Okay, now the MVP chance has started up again for Jokic. So he's going to come out. And when he goes out, you just feel like that opens the door a little bit for Italy, but it's in the final minute of this third quarter. So it's natural that he would go out. Remember, Italy took the lead with the Spisu three-pointer. Now they're trailing by two. Bounce pass to Paiola and the bump by the Aramas. And Tudis, the Greece coach in the middle, watching this game as well. He looks like he's pretty nervous too. Well, this game hasn't even started. There's all <laughs> kinds of nervous energy before the game. A lot on the line here in these knockout stages, and you really want your teams to be at their best. France will play the winner of this game. Fontecchio sets back for three. That's a tough one. Off the back of the cup. Well defended from Lucic there. Twenty seconds in the quarter, ten seconds now on the shot clock. The other mass has to put it up for three. Not a good possession. And Spisu brings it forward. And Guterich, with Serbia, had a, a foul to give. So 3.1 seconds left. So Spisu playing a big part. Everybody, I mean, this game, I think, as Castelloni looks out, I, it is unfolding not like anybody expected, I would suggest. I think a lot of people thought Serbia would win big tonight. Here is Meli over to Paiola. Oh, it goes in and out. Well, <laughs> that guy's got some spunk, doesn't he? He's going to go over to the bench. Serbia leads 68 66 over Italy, 10 minutes remaining. Again, the key numbers here, 12 for 30, important three-point shooting from Italy, especially in the third quarter, bringing them back. Italy are playing with, uh, with so much, so much, uh, emotion, concentration. They, they've really stepped it up a notch in the round of 16 compared to what they had in Milan, that's for sure. Although yes. they did play, uh, you could probably say they played this hard as well against Greece and Antetokounmpo. Well, they know what's but at stake this here. This was the big moment here where Pazeko couldn't control his emotions because he had to leave. He had his technical, and then the bench technical forced him to exit. It's just a bizarre way to leave a game like yeah, this. Yeah, it's, again, you're excited about your debut in the knockout stage, and you get kicked out of the game. So um, tough development. You know the team is trying to rally. We'll see how it plays out in the fourth quarter. Thanks, Mike. Well, Mike, have you ever scanned in the barcode? For courtside 1891. Jeff, I, re I really scores. I enjoy courtside 1891 because it allows us to watch all of the matchups and all of the games here at Eurobasket, not just the ones that we're doing.
Fourth quarter underway. Italy have possession, trailing Serbia by two points. The winner to face France in the quarterfinals. Pisu, Meli, Fontecchio, Paiola, Datome on the court for the Azzurri. Here's Meli. And good shot for Meli. Misses. Wasn't missing much in the first half, especially. And again, with Jokic off the court, you feel like Italy need to take advantage. Guterich over to Militunov. Kalinic, shot clock winding down. I think his last three. No, nope, he's going to drive this time. And Paiola with the ball. Quickly over to Spisu. And he is fouled by Yermas. Nice job, Yermas, stopping the break there, making a play on the ball. But again, on the offensive end for Serbia, Meli is not guarding Militunov at all. He's a ball reversal guy up top trying to set unguarded screens. But Meli just packing the paint, protecting the rim. Protector coming out. Polinara comes in. Spisu gets it in just in the nick of time. Serbia switching screens right now. Polinara to Mele, and he was fouled by Guterich. So again, let's see if Italy can take advantage of some of these matchups that will present themselves as Serbia switches. Three fouls on Guterich. Entry pass to Polinara. Forgotten to Kudrzic. Playing some mean D. Great hands, Serbia, but Spisu gets it. And Spisu hits another three. Having the game of his life for Italy. On fire, Jeff. On fire. Spisu with 18 points. He's played so many qualifiers for European qualifiers for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. So many games for in the Italian League and the Basketball Champions League. It all adds up. He's got the experience, and look at that. They take it away. Paiola, Serbia fans getting a little nervous. Their team is supposed to be the one that's supposed to win this thing, a lot of people think. And maybe they will, but they are having a rough ride. Now, Meli, pump fake, puts it up, stays with it, goes up again, and it's a three-point lead. Again, if they're going to continue to switch, Italy trying to establish Meli with the post-up advantage. He stayed with it and got the big bucket. Kalinic now dumps it down low and a hold. This was Melly at the offensive end. Mitzic getting to the baseline. Wow. Guter is wide open. And Militunov uh, kind of mistimed his jump or thought the ball was going to come off differently, come off the rim. Great no look pass. Spisu again, they left him open, and he's hot as a firecracker. And then that's how you wanted that. They have given themselves, they put themselves into position for a shock win if they can pull this off. Mitzic drives in, cool, calm, and collected. No pressure for number 22. Polinar left in the right, alone in the right corner. The Spisu, surprised he gives it up. He's so hot. Here's Polinara swooping in. Pol again, Polinara, Italy attacking with so much confidence right now. Remember they beat Serbia in the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament last year in Belgrade. Guterich missing. But that was 
a Serbia without Jokic, who's trying to get back into the game. This is a turning in potential nightmare for Serbia. An early exit that no none of their fans expect. Polinara again for three. Are you kidding me? Achille Polinara and Casaloni and Pedrag Danilovic. Where is it all going wrong for Serbia right now? This is an Italy team that, despite losing Pozzeco, it's almost as if they're playing for their coach. This is an outstanding response from Italy, playing with so much confidence, stepping up, hitting shots, shooting the ball. Nine-point deficit, six minutes to go. Big challenge here for Serbia. Marco Spisu hitting big shot after big shot for his Italian team. Nine point advantage. Italy outscoring Serbia 13 to 2. And look at this, Jeff. 21 points today with a tournament average of 3.8. Talk about rising to the occasion. Wow. Unbelievable. Kalinic. Yermas, Jokic now back in the game, trying to go to work on Melly. Turn around, he gets blocked. Wow, Italy and Spisu again racing down the floor. Polinara again. Steps back, Polinara, good! Italy! Playing out of their skins! This is what happens. And the charge in Italy, get it back. Mike, this can't be happening, I can't believe it. I'm stunned. We have a team playing with pure emotion. And now the hard part for Serbia is once you lose momentum, how do you get it back? It starts on the defensive end. Here comes Lucic back into the game. Now, Jeff, it's a 12-point game. There are 5.21 to play. A lot of basketball left. We're about to get into winning time. Serbia has got to get stops. Five eleven remaining. It's uh, it just simply doesn't seem like this is possible, but it is. It's happening. Paola looked like Mitzic. Well, I would have said it looked like he had a foul there, but he must have gotten all ball. Take a look here. He spins back to the middle as he brings the ball back. All ball He's there. I mean, he got some arm, maybe a little bit on the end. Important possession here. Let's see if Serbia can force, get the defensive stop, clean up the board, and try to cut into the deficit. Here's Melik. That was short, and now Mitic brings it forward. Serbia needed points, and they need them now. Uh, Paola reaches in and commits the foul. Into 
Kalinich again. Mitzic drives in. Melly over to Paiola. And they get it. And the ball batted out of bounds. Andrea Menigan watching, doing Italian TV. So one second on the shot clock here. Time to catch and shoot. And blocked by Lucic. And oh! They're going to say before the shot. Now they're going to consult the referee. If this goes in, what? <laughs> crazy. This is the type of thing that can happen in a game like this, Mike. Oh, they are counting it. Whoa. And he is fouled on the play, a potential four point play. Unbelievable. See it again. He knew the foul was coming. Yeah. No, actually, it's a good call. <laughs> and he banked it in from half court. And it's also, if you consider the referees huddled up to make sure they got it right. So good job just to make sure. And probably uh, one of the only times you actually argue yeah, for now, appeal and it works. Let's see if this can be a spark for Serbia here, cutting the deficit under 10. But if you're on that Serbia bench, Coach Pesic has to think about using Jokic in pick and roll situations because they've adjusted so well to the post touches. And a foul on Serbia as Paiola goes down. Wow. I can't, I can't say anything else right now. It's just so hard to digest that we're in this situation. And I'm sure I speak for Italy, what most Serbian fans were thinking. Right. And Italy should go back to the pick and pop game that they started with attacking Jokic because you will always get an advantage. Here goes Spisu over to Meli. It's not good. And here comes Yermas. Still some work to do for the Azuri. The Jokic four-point play looms large right now. And Yermas swatted out of bounds. Really important possession here. You see Yarmaz driving into the floor space. Excellent straight up challenge there from Fontecchio. Here's Mitzic for three. And the basketball will go this way. Another foul has been called. Jeff, this is a winning play from Ayola. Lucic going to the boards, drawing the foul. I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you who's going to win this, but well, the momentum, say, the momentum is all Italy right now, but there is time remaining. Yeah. If the veteran, experienced Serbian team can execute well, message to Kalinic, open for three, and Polinara with the rebound. Again, I like the fact they're putting. Jokic in pick and rolls now with Micic. Oh, a dangerous pass. Melly has it. And the Italian passing game has been superb, hasn't it? The way they've been whipping it around. Laser passes. Shot clock about to expire. They got to put it up. And Jokic called for a foul. Or no, Guderic called for a foul at the end of the shot clock. And this will be two shots, Jeff. Well, they were both kind of uh, going at each other. It's a tough call on Guterich. But Melly is at the line. And remember, Serbia led by 14 points in this game in the first half.
Uh, th this goes down as one of the all-time incredible games in Eurobasket history. Incredible results if, if Italy pulled this off, Mike. I think no one here really expected Serbia to struggle. Be honest. Yeah. We were talking about this last yeah, night. Yeah, a lot of people in our discussions Dirk were Wojcik like. I can't believe it. Yeah, a lot of people here had Serbia as a tournament favorite, as a dominant team. Guterich. Guarded by Paiola. And look at the defense, the help defense. And it really, it, it really goes back to Pazeko walking off the court in tears and shake, hugging his players, shaking the hands of Pezic and hugging that man right there, Pedrag Danilovic, and Again, all of the Serbia players. We're, we're even looking at an 18 to six fourth quarter here. Now Yomas calls a foul on Melly. Four fouls on Melly, and Jokic goes to the line. But, Jeff, do you have the feeling that Serbia can stop Italy? Yes. I mean, you know, Italy's making jump shots. So as long, you know, it feels like eventually those jump shots are going to drop, but they've continued to make them in the second half. Really, but this, this is the Italy we saw last summer, yeah, by the way. Really good ball movement, really good teamwork, creating advantages in the pick and pop situation. Again, you feel like they will continually have the opportunity to get good shots with teamwork. Spisu. Over to Mele, and he goes in and is fouled by Jokic. And to answer your question, maybe they can't stop them. Again, the, <laughs> if they're pick, gonna foul. the pick and pop game to Melly will always give them an advantage. And here he drives to the basket and draws the foul. Melly has had one of his most important ever games for Italy tonight. 20 points, six rebounds, and he scored a lot of those points when they had their backs against the wall and they were trying to come back from that 14-point deficit. Mits it to Jokic. Taking the call, and Yomas calls the foul. And Italy's got a chance for a three-point play. And Jokic doing everything he can in his superhuman basketball body to bring his team back. So again, after Italy adjusted to defending the low post, they've put Jokic in the pick-and-roll situations. That's and a big play, by the way. Melly's out of the game. Play. So now, Ricci comes in. And Number 10, Serbia, Nikola Palinic, fourth personal, fits his call. So he didn't capitalize, and uh, now that sends Italy to the line with the foul, both teams over the limit, and it's uh, Giampaolo Ricci. Just who, back into the game. And takes his time and makes it. Well, that's ice running in as you know what. Italy are you know, we were talking earlier, they weren't getting many opportunities. Well, now they're 11 of 13, 85%. 
They've hit 16 three-pointers. That's the biggest number. And those shots made by Gian Gianpaolo Ricci. Clock is, uh, I think, starting to become the enemy of Serbia here. And the ball knocked. Oh, and Ricci called for the foul again. Italy moving their feet, getting in pretty good positions there. Making it tough on the referees to make these calls, I think. Watch this again. Saw Ricci drop with the diver, and then he engaged the ball handler late. But he was also in the keyway. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, he just caught his wrist, caught his hand. So just like that, he fouls out. <laughs> so pazeco has gone. melly has gone. Richie's gone. And Baliga comes into the game. But Baliga has been a good part of the Italian team for many games. Undersized, that's the issue right now. Well, what he brings, not so much offense, is defense. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, big, he's a, a defender, body. a mobile defender, and uh, a diver in pick and roll. Well, whichever way this result goes, this will be the stuff of legend for the team that wins this game. If Italy win it, it's a huge shock. If Serbia win it, it's an amazing comeback. Spisu dribbling, looking for space. Probably the player of the game for the way he has played in this second half. He has been unreal. Here he is again for three, and at time, right on cue, puts up an air ball. You build them up, Mike, and they let you down. Uh, he's had a wonderful game. They tried to uh, get the attack to mismatch against Jokic. He just got a step back, just didn't have a good shot. 21 points for Spisu. Now to Jokic again, and Fonteku comes up with a steal. He's going to go all the way, and he gets a shot off. Oh. Unbelievable. Fontecchio. And it feels like... The basketball gods smiling on Italy right now. Look at this again. It starts with a great defense. You get your hands up. And then watch him go the other way. Simone Fontecchio, one of the rising stars in international basketball at your service. Utah, you've got a good one. You just can't make it up, Mike. This is a special Euro basket. Timeout, Serbia. So long, Italy struggling to recapture the magic that they had two decades ago. Third place at the Eurobasket in Sweden, which qualified them for the Olympics. The gold medal game at the Athens Games. So many players, NBA players, coming through the system. But as European basketball got stronger, Italy struggled to stay at the top. We saw them have the big wins last year in Belgrade. And then after really struggling in Milan in the group phase of this competition, they are on the verge of beating one of the tournament favorites, Serbia. Kalinic hits a three, keeps them alive a little bit. And Vincent Cole, well, he knows how crazy this year basket has been. His team held on and beat Turkey in overtime yesterday. Back to a nine-point game. Serbia not fouling, so they're going to play defense on this possession. Spisu taking the clock down to get it to Fontecchio. He puts it up. That was short. And it's going to stay at this end. Players for both of these teams have been together a long time this summer, playing, getting ready for the European qualifiers for the FIBA Basketball World Cup, now playing in this FIBA Eurobasket. 
Serbia having been the best team in Prague, but here they are, very close to going out in the round of 16. Spisu to Baliga on the baseline and goes off the side of the backboard. Not sure that was the, the best option on offense, but anyway, and now they get it to Lucic. Oh, he gets blocked, but goal interference. Beautiful pass there. It looked like he wanted to throw the ball to the corner, but he saw Lucic with the open lane. Lucic, here you take a look. Mitic found him, and there's the goaltend. You know, this, this thing is not over. All of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. And if there's any team that can come back from a deficit, you would think it would be the Serbia team in this final minute. Remember, Greece came from behind in the semifinals in Belgrade to stun France from this very deficit here back in 2005. Tony Parker and Co. on top, and they couldn't hold on. Now this is a, an Italy team that's trying to hold on to beat, to beat Serbia. Serbia fans can't quite believe it. Paola back to the line. Takes his time and misses the free throw. And the door opens just a little bit more for Serbia. Just remember Jokic hitting that shot and getting fouled and getting a four point play. Crazy things can happen. Paola does make the second to take it up to an eight point lead. Melly's fouled out, he's watching the game. From the, from the bench. They've got to hurry. The clock is definitely the enemy. Mitzic, is he going to put up a three? Nope, he's going to drive over to Kalinic for three. That's short. And then he goes down, and they tell him to get up. Polinara fouled by Marinkovic in Italy. Now have to think this is going to be their win. You know, you've got to give complete... Respect to this Italy team. Losing their coach and controlling play down the stretch. Once they took control of momentum. What a performance from Marco Spisu. Hitting big shots and then Fontecchio. Melli was good pretty much from start to finish. Polinara continues continues to be this guy's improvement has been just immense the past several years and he only makes one of two so Jokic with the rebound up it goes and the pass intercepted by Fontecchio and Italy closing in the Azuri you can't believe it Serbia with two-time NBA, NBA MVP Nikola Jokic and the legendary Svetislav Pesic as coach they're going out. They tried to get a basket for Baliga. I'm not sure that was a good idea. Now Lucic goes down, dunks it. 93-86. And Spisu fouled by Jokic. Remarkable scenes in Berlin. The post-mortem on this. And look at Pazeko. Pazeko is, is on his knees. <laughs> Amazing scene for Italy. I guess what is the rule? He can be in the tunnel, but he can't be. You don't want to have any, any uh, you don't want to blow it because you couldn't contain yourself. <laughs> I was suggesting last night this, this Serbia team could lose. Yeah, and Jeff, you had a premonition. This I, wasn't, I wasn't sure it was going to happen tonight, but nevertheless, Mitzic puts it up. That's it. Italy. Well, I don't know, Mike. The magnitude of this result is going to resonate. It's going to shock Europe. This is the biggest win in Italy for the last couple. They won in Belgrade last year, but this is just simply astounding. Italy have won 94 to 86 over Serbia. They advanced to the quarterfinals to take on France.
and Jeff, we saw some great games yesterday. And look at Pazeko. Now he can come back out, I believe. I'm not sure what the results are. I don't think he, I'm not sure if he can. He wants to celebrate with his players. It's really kind of sad. But I think he needs to be careful that now that he has been ejected, I'm not sure that he's allowed to come out and celebrate with his team. And now that the team is going to run over to him, and they're going to lift him up and hug him. Yes, he just wanted to be with his players. we got to get the camera on that. Look at that. Ast astonishing. Astonishing scenes for the Italians and Pazeco. Suddenly, this is a team that is together and has possibilities of doing something. We have seen great games yesterday. We have not seen an upset on this level. Fantastic performance from Italy and just heartbreak and disappointment. For you look Serbia. at Marco Spuso, it's the beauty of sports, isn't it? Who in the world expects Spisu and this team to come out and do what he did tonight. 22 points, six assists. This book, remarkable. This legendary performance from Spisu. Again, you talk about a lot of names that you expect to impact the game, and Spisu becomes the biggest of stars in this game. And you know that as Greece watching this and getting ready to come onto the court to face the Czech Republic, they are well aware that upsets happen. The Eurobasket magic has touched this Italian team and Serbia, who came to Berlin with their fans expecting a title, go home in the round of 16. It is simply astonishing. The beauty of knockout stage tournament basketball, anything can happen. And it wasn't an issue of did Jokic play well. It was mainly it was uh, an Italian team that suddenly got hot. Italy. And their defense was great. 22 assists, seven turnovers, 16 th made threes. And this happened. Look, when he was ejected, Pozzeco went and shook the hands and hugged Danilovic. And it was kind of like weird things started to happen, Mike. I mean, you, you could like not. the life got sucked out of Serbia. Yeah, Jeff, you could not make it up. You know, but once they got that momentum, Italy got that momentum. Look at Spisu. You know, Serbia could not grab it back. And then the assistant coach coming out and steering the team home. But it was a team that was, it was as if it was playing possessed and just simply was not going to play to the scripts. They were coming out. And they were going to bring this one home for their coach, Pozeko. And again, the possibilities are there for the Azuri now. You could see undeniably. the heart of this team on display on the floor here in Berlin. Just a great team performance and great team win for Italy. The unpredictability of FIBA Eurobasket 2022 is the dominant theme now as Serbia go out. And... This was just kind of at the end as Fonteca was icing it, putting it up, and getting it to drop. And look at Paiola. Kalinic hitting a late three, but it was just not going to be enough. And Melly, who fouled out of the game, goes up and celebrates with one of the assistants. And then the coach, Pazeko, not able to come back out on the court, celebrates with his team. And they are going to have one heck of a happy night tonight celebrating and, and talking about this win. This is the most unlikely of wins. Great moment for Italy basketball. So today we've seen it all almost. Poland, Finland behind Laurie Markin and his 43 points. Now Italy with the stunning, stunning result of this competition. And next and last, Greece taking on the Czech Republic. And I can honestly say, Mike, for anybody out there, you better be tuning in. You don't know what's going to happen next. Unbelievable. Italy, you play with so much heart, so much passion, so much determination. You wore your heart on your sleeve. Your temper's boiled over. But you have done it. You have shocked the world tonight. You have advanced to the quarterfinals, knocking out Serbia.